everybody. Texas Deacon here. Thank you for joining me. Sorry it's been such a long time since I put up a video. I've been so tied up in another project, a good project by the way. Today's date happens to be June the 13th, Friday the 13th, 2014. The title of today's lesson is The Gold Telephone. The scripture reading is 2 Timothy Chapter 1, verse 11 and 12. This is Paul. To which I was appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. For this reason I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. And again, I am not ashamed is the key message from, from Paul there. The Gold Telephone. This is about a European evangelist, and we're going to look up the definition of an evangelist. There just might be someone who doesn't know. Okay, and the evangelist has a lot of different meanings, but for our purposes, it is a traveling preacher, a revivalist. That is what an evangelist is. The European evangelist. Now, this evangelist had a, a calling or a goal or something he wanted to do. And that was he wanted to preach in all 50 of the United States. So he came over, landed in New York City at, a, at the airport and spent the night in a hotel there. Well, during the night, he had a dream. Now, in this dream, he got on stage at his first church there in New York, and there was a gold telephone. Uh, up there behind the pulpit. And it had a, a tag hanging underneath it that said $20,000. Well, he had to ask the pastor what that meant. So the pastor explained to him, said, that's a direct line to heaven. $20,000 a minute. Okay. So next he is up in Pennsylvania. And so same thing, gets in the pulpit, same gold telephone, said it was only 15000 So he asked the uh, pastor, why is it 15000 It was 20000 in New York City. And the pastor explained to him, well, Pennsylvania is closer to heaven, and therefore you don't have as much of a long-distance call. Well, he went into Kansas, and Kansas was like 12000 he went into Reno, I went into Nevada. Nevada was like 25000 And the last state he come to was Texas. Done done all other 49. He gets up there to the pulpit and there's that gold telephone. However, it does not have a dollar amount under it. There's no sign hanging under it. So he asked the pastor why. And he explained to the pastor about all these other states he'd been in and uh, the cost of calling heaven. The pastor kind of blushed and said, well, it's like this. Texas is so close to heaven that it's just a local call, no long distance charges. Don't throw anything at me. <laughs> okay, and now we're getting down to the serious part of this lesson. Every one of us, myself included, way in the back of our minds, in the back of our consciousness, our unconsciousness, deep down in our soul, we have what amounts to a gold telephone with tags hanging under it, with things written on them, no, not dollar amounts. It'll be those things that are keeping us from closer contact with heaven. 
and do things such as why you don't go to church. How about that? Famous excuse. Sunday morning is the only morning I have to sleep in. I understand that. I've been there. I went to church anyway. However, if you can get up early on Sunday morning to make the Sunday school, hey, church doesn't start about quarter to eleven. And what about those churches that celebrate Saturday? How about Sunday night? Services on Sunday night or Wednesday night? The reason you don't go to church is because you don't really want to. Now, let's look at some of the other reasons, some of these other signs that might be hanging under your gold telephone. How about nothing to wear? I fully realize that there are so many churches out there that want you to dress like you just stepped out of a fashion magazine. However, there's also plenty of churches that will accept you as long as you've had a bath and your clothes are clean, clean and decent. That's all that anybody can really ask. Another thing that might be there, what would my friends think? If your friends are going to come down on you for seeking the Lord and Savior, then might I recommend that you get some new friends and church is probably a good place as any to start. How about pride? Swallowing that pride knowing that someday you're going to have to stand before that congregation and confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Do you find that too embarrassing to do that? Never be embarrassed of Jesus. He is never embarrassed of you, okay? How about your lifestyle? Maybe you have a lifestyle that you know isn't what it should be. A lot of people do. And all I can say to you about that, if you recognize it as a lifestyle that shouldn't be, then change it. And don't wait around about it. How about past sins? A lot of people think my sins are so great that even God can't forgive them. God can forgive every sin you ever committed, and he will forget them. And remember them no more. It says so in his word. So when you pray for a sin to be forgiven, don't bring it up again. He doesn't know what you're talking about. How about those people that call themselves atheists? There are no true atheists. We've all heard this saying, there's no atheist in a foxhole. Thank the good Lord, I've never been in a foxhole. Hope I never am. But as the way this country is going politically, a lot of these foxholes in their own front yard pretty soon. Anyway, the closest I've ever come to, I was in 82nd Airborne. And I have made jumps in the middle of the night, pitch black, stepping out into nothing you can see. I can say with a surety there were no atheists on that airplane. Time. Church will take up some of your time. Well, true, it will. However, you always find time to do those things that you want to do. We know this to be true. Now, the financial cost of money. No matter what we do, no matter where we go, or how we do it, or why we do it, there's always some financial cost. And church will be a little bit of a cost to you. But God doesn't want you to give out of an obligation to give. He wants you to give from the heart. He really doesn't want your money if you don't want to give it. Money is a way of saying that this is where my heart is. Because where your treasure is, there your heart is also. And you can't outgive God, by the way. I've heard people say, when I get old, Christianity is for the very young and the very old.
whether that is not true. And please don't take that attitude that you're going to wait till you get old. What I recommend you do is just turn on the evening news for three or four days in a row and keep a record of those people that lost their life in a fraction of a second without warning. You could be one of them. What future would you have if it happened to you today? Now, you might say, I'm a smoker, I'm an alcoholic. Well, neither one of those are good, and I thank the good Lord that I do not have an addictive personality. Smoking, tobacco, and alcohol will not keep you out of heaven. They will get you there quicker. Now, if you have a drinking problem, don't, please don't show up to church drunk or smelling of alcohol. You talk to your pastor privately, and he will help you with your problem. And if he won't, then you're at the wrong church. Now, I've just listed a few of the obvious reasons the obvious signs, the obvious listings. What are yours? Are they these or do you have others? Whatever they are, they're not worth you spending an eternity in hell. You think about that when next time you uh, make up some flimsy excuse not to go to church or not to establish a Christian lifestyle. Until next time, may God continue to bless and forgive the United States of America. May God continue to bless the Republic of Texas and may God continue to bless you and yours.